Welcome all, this is Vernier UK and here is my top 10. Ground rules are as follows. All games date back no further than the last console generation, and while listed 1 through 10, this is no indication of favouritism, rather more an indication of my slow descent into disorganised chaos. Today's episode, aesthetics and design. Shall we? Let's do this. First up, number 10, Hyperlight Drifter. I wanted to give Hyperlight Drifter a mention for its ability to capture not only the hearts but the donations of thousands of Kickstarters. It's one of the more successful Kickstarter stories and I believe its artistic designs hold key to this. The developer has spoken about his influences from Studio Ghibli and I can certainly see Norsica channeled through this trailer. Here's hoping it deserves the hype. Number 9, Mirror's Edge. Futuristic dystopian stories, female protagonists, Mirror's Edge seemed to offer a lot for someone like myself, someone with very specific tastes. It does so with really good aesthetics however. The cityscape is a myriad of white architecture interjected with lurid primaries. Even the distinctive eye tattoo boasted by the protagonist gives the impression of polish. Gameplay wise it never really appealed, but I was able to enjoy myself due to the world I was placed within. It doesn't make Mirror's Edge great, but it certainly helped make it good for me. Number 8, Journey. Why is this title only on the PlayStation 3? Why? Rarely do you find a game that seems to affect the community as much as this. This game has a multitude of unique aspects. Tying them together is its atmospheric design. I've heard of rather dubious rumours sifting through the internet of a Journey HD remake for next gen, and while this thought entices me, my only hope is that somehow Gabe Newell descends from his fortress of solitude and asks that game company for its allegiance. It seems rather criminal that we don't have a journey for PC thus far. If you've yet to experience Journey, perhaps now is the time to pick up a rather cheap PS3. And number 7, Mark of the Ninja. I must divulge, I'm rather a fan of Clay Entertainment. I'd reserve this spot for either Mark of the Ninja or Don't Starve. Both clearly have fantastic art, but creed of my psychosis entailed, and quite simply put, one game allows me to descend from the rafters and slice shit up. And here we are. In over the last millennia, I have not enjoyed a platformer so harmonious in its delivery. High quality is achieved in art, design, music, mechanics and even story. Number 6, The Unfinished Swan. This title you might not have heard of, it's by the same developers as Journey. I could have placed any number of their titles in this list, as it seems to be a requirement of the company that its game should be both unique, interesting and beautiful. Not a bad design brief all things considered. Unfortunately again it is waylaid by the limitations of a single platform, a situation they should really rectify as soon as physically possible. You're welcome to disagree, but further diversity within this medium, in my eyes, should only really improve it for all. Pull up a chair for number 5, Hearthstone. Imagine the games industry is like a sludge. Cutting through this is Blizzard's online card game, which has been striking the community a bit like a festering disease, only a lot more fun. Accreditation for its artist is one unsung aspect of Hearthstone that I can mention. I'm hoping this is a sign of greater appreciation that pervades the industry for its designers. For me, it's a casual title, for others, it's a rabbit hole with no escape. Descending from the stars at number 4, Mass Effect. Mass Effect brought us a rich and well thought out universe, filled with well portrayed aliens and the potential to explore. It brought us a history too, one that pervades into the uncanny valley and preys on our fears of the unknown. This could not have been so well realised without obsession for the details. I would say the sequel is an undervalued gem, building upon Mass Effect and forging a new mythology. I really do hope in future we get to see more of this well realised universe, rather than just the slow descent into a bland run and gun. A declassified number 3, Deus Ex. This world is horrific. Unless you are part of the establishment, you are doomed. This is a world not too distant from our own, but it's a world that has fallen. Its appeal might seem hard to grasp at first. I don't want to say it's niche, because it isn't. It's a futuristic dystopian design, and one that projects a sad beauty. In a future release, I would love to experience a different slant. Instead of starting out with power, I would love to rise. Start as someone down on his luck, progress, gain in strength, rather than simply just taking the role of a super agent. There is no other game like Deus Ex. Its depth drags you under. Intoxicated by your ability to create your own story, you are the storyteller here. 
If you were a fan of Blade Runner, Ghost in the Shell, or Logan's Run, then I would say that Deus Ex is something to sink your robotic teeth into. Number 2, Bioshock. Bioshock is a very odd game. The story has little bearing on linearity in comparison to its rather well-trodden mechanical progression. It's a basic FPS at heart. The story goes beyond into metaphysical ideology and then kind of childishly plays about. Its visual style is one that adds character. You feel very insecure in this world. It plays with comparisons to Ayn Rand and Judeo-Christian doctrine, but beyond into a depth which is somewhat intimidating. I can't tell if this game was a labour of love or just a curse on a very busy mind. Number 1. Guild Wars 2 ArenaNet is a company that not only understands the value of art, but the implementation from conceptual design to completion. There is something to be said for having the budget to accommodate such talent. However, being able to utilise numerous teams with such mastery has created a world that basically just captures imagination. You can really find yourself daydreaming in these landscapes, find excitement in the mere act of exploration. My only complaint within its story is that it seems to be circling a somewhat badly written fantasy trope hole. If you're new to the game, however, don't let this put you off. Its mechanics are as strong as its design. As a fan, I wish Keikai Kotaki the best of luck with his future career. I hope you've enjoyed this top 10 list for games featuring great art and design. I'll be back soon with more content, so be sure to subscribe.